It's an unusually calm moment in the SCP Foundation. No one is in the hall besides a scientist and a young female subject. There are no tests going on, just observation. The scientist calmly asks her questions as he escorts her down the hallway, hoping to get more insight into her unique abilities. So why does she look so utterly terrified? As the scientist tries to get her attention, the young woman becomes more preoccupied, staring nervously around the hallway. Does she fear the scientist? Why does she keep muttering strange phrases that don't make any sense? How did it break through such a heavy door? That door is nearly a foot thick. How did it manage to destroy it? The scientist is looking at his notes and tries to make sense of the young woman's statements when he notices something terrible. She's staring at one of the doors containing another highly dangerous SCP in top of the line restraints, but it's safely locked away, right? The scientist swears he can hear the sound of scratching behind the steel door. It was 17 hours later when the dangerous SCP broke out of its containment cell and could have laid waste to the entire SCP containment facility if it wasn't for the heavily armed response team waiting outside to contain it and return it to its cell. The huge loss of life was only avoided because the SCP Foundation had advanced warning, all thanks to the greatest secret weapon the Foundation has ever seen, SCP-187. But the Foundation's most powerful defense against dangerous SCPs is probably its most unlikely, a completely normal-looking young woman in her early 20s, whose only distinguishing characteristic is how thin and haunted she looks. Despite being no danger to anyone in the Foundation, she's one of the most carefully guarded SCPs in the facility, to protect her from herself. SCP-187 is one of the most powerful precognitives ever found, but her abilities are a danger to her own mind. This average-looking girl has a unique telepathic ability where she can see into the future of whatever she's looking at, seeing it simultaneously in two frames of existence. She sees it as it is now, as well as what it will look like in the future. Say, for instance, she's looking at a baby tiger cub. Aw, cute. At the same time, she also sees the massive, fearsome jungle beast it'll become. She won't see minor changes to its state, so she won't be able to tell you how your next haircut will look. But if something drastic is about to happen to someone or something, she'll be able to predict it with perfect accuracy. There's only one problem. She can't turn it off. This involuntary ability goes off whenever she sees someone or something that's about to undergo a major change in its status. This means that at any time, she can be bombarded with horrible visuals, and that even includes food. Ever since her abilities kicked in, SCP-187 has been unable to eat normally because whatever she eats or drinks, she sees it in its future state. When she looks at a glass of water, she'll see it as a liquid, but a little more yellow than it usually is. As for solid food, she'll see it as what it comes out as after it's been digested. Not exactly appetizing, so for a while it looked like she was likely to starve herself to death in the Foundation's custody. Fortunately, the administration scientists were able to find some workarounds around her ability. Feeding and hydrating her intravenously was an option, but further study of her abilities made clear that her power was processed through her eyes. That means that when she's blindfolded, she's able to eat without her precognition kicking in. Being assigned to the detail for SCP-187 is very different from most SCP details. If you're assigned to SCP-682, you're constantly worried that the horrible carnivorous beast with a hatred for all things human is going to get loose and tear you to shreds. Not so much with SCP-187. This duty is more like a medical team, where the patient is highly valuable to the institution and can't be allowed to get free or to harm themselves in any way. The Foundation has taken the highest precautions to ensure SCP-187 is safe, including a set of medical restraints that she's strapped into, except when out of her cell or participating in tests. Even when given more freedom, her hands are always in soft mittens, to keep her from trying to damage her own eyes as a way to neutralize her powers. Her team blindfolds her before every mealtime and feeds her with some mild sedatives added to her food to keep her calm. Through consistent care, she's starting to recover from her self-induced starvation. The personnel chosen for this assignment are carefully screened before being sent in to interact with her. They need to be the most responsible and detail-oriented members of the staff who won't miss a thing when it comes to her care routine. 
Just because 187 is harmless doesn't mean she can't move fast, and one misstep could cost the Foundation their most valuable asset. And unlike most SCPs, 187 is rarely handled by D-Class personnel. They don't have access to higher security specimens, and they don't have the training due to their short tenure. But there's another reason the Foundation keeps 187 away from the lowest men on the totem pole. D-Class personnel are frequently used to test out dangerous SCPs, and are lucky if they get to end their service intact. When she was exposed to some D-Class personnel early in her stay, she saw them as horribly bloated, with holes in their heads, or missing half their body. Those unfortunate personnel soon met horrible fates, sucked out into the vacuum of space, shot while trying to escape, and bitten in half by an escaping anomalous creature. Additionally, while most D-Class personnel are amnesticized after their service, some are terminated for breaking protocol or trying to escape. SCP-187 would see any of these unfortunate personnel walking around as the corpses they'd wind up as. The Foundation wants to learn the full extent of her powers, though, and this means tests. Lots of tests. When she first came into the Foundation's care, they were focused on figuring out how her power worked. They gave her IQ tests, and she got every answer right on the written test. Her IQ was measured as being off the charts, at least 300, which would make her the smartest person alive. But her normal behavior didn't seem to match up with this level of superintelligence. Confusing them even more, when she was given a computerized IQ test, she scored slightly below average, with a score of 97. The scientists assigned to her case studied the results and created other tests, until they understood how her precognitive ability works. She can see the future of anything that's physically affected, so when an answer is marked down on a piece of paper, that's a notable change. But when an entry is typed into a computer, the computer remains the same, so her ability wasn't able to help her on the computerized tests. But her abilities could still help the Foundation, especially when it comes to improving security for other anomalies. She had inadvertently prevented the escape of an especially deadly SCP creature by predicting it would break through the door. But how would her powers manifest in more complicated cases? Some Foundation researchers postulated that she might be able to see into the future of deadly, indestructible anomalies like SCP-682 and figure out a way to eliminate it. But temporal experts warned this could create a paradox. After all, she would be looking at an elimination protocol that didn't exist until she looked at it. But her powers and how they might help in other ways other than neutralization warranted further exploration. So personnel were assigned, and the SCP-187 experiments began. SCP-162 is a horrible mass of fish hooks, wire, and other sharp implements. It exudes a psychological pull, and any unfortunate person who touches it winds up being pulled in by the barbed objects and absorbed into its mass. SCP-187 was kept at a safe distance and examined it, and was undisturbed. She saw it only as a pile of melted slag, indicating that it would be neutralized at some point. SCP-529, a normal and friendly cat except for the fact that its back half appears to be completely missing. The cat acts as if it's whole, and when SCP-187 was exposed to it, she didn't seem to notice anything wrong with the cat. She played with it briefly and seemed to be calmer than any other time she was examined. The Foundation is considering using SCP-529 as a motivating tool after she requested to revisit it. Other tasks had much more disturbing results, as SCP-187 discovered things about subjects that researchers were previously unaware of. SCP-003, a strange organic circuit board made of hair and nails attached to a stone tablet, appears to be an ancient machine. But when SCP-187 was introduced to it, she greeted it like a person and had a conversation with it as the staff looked on confused. When she was interviewed after, she described the entity as a very nice lady. What is SCP-003 evolving into? The Foundation is studying it closely thanks to SCP-187's advance warning. When exposed to SCP-015, a massive network of pipes that seems to be slowly growing and defends itself from any attempts to work on it with tools, SCP-187 observed few differences from its current state, until she opened a door. Inside, she reported a massive network of pipes reaching for miles, with no end in sight. SCP-015 had been reduced to a manageable site, 
and its danger had been contained. But SCP-187 indicated that it may be getting ready for its biggest and most dangerous expansion yet. SCP-415 a seemingly normal human man with an ability to regenerate his internal organs, has been a subject of the Foundation's investigation since his arrival, particularly due to the strange physical alterations he underwent to make it easier to access his organs. He's one of the more peaceful SCPs at the Foundation, but as soon as SCP-187 was exposed to him, she became disturbed. She begged to be removed from the room, and upon interrogation revealed that she saw SCP-415 as a deceased corpse. What is going to happen to the seemingly immortal man? SCP-187 was also exposed to some of the more dangerous SCPs in the Foundation, including SCP-173, a seemingly living statue that moves in unpredictable ways whenever it isn't observed, and has been responsible for the deaths of many D-Class personnel who enter its enclosure for cleaning. But it seems to be stable in containment, so why, when exposed to it, did SCP-187 begin screaming immediately? have to be removed from the enclosure and fall into a catatonic state for two days. She remembered nothing from the vision she had of the statue, and it took days for her to recover fully. The Foundation is keeping a close eye on the statue, even closer than they were before. SCP-106, also known as the Old Man, a depraved killer resembling an elderly rotting corpse, is known for its frequent escapes and sadistic attacks on anyone near it. When exposed to SCP-187, the observation lasted less than a minute before the old man attempted to escape. SCP-187 looked to be in direct danger from the old man, but he never touched her or harmed her in any way. When she was interviewed after, she explained that the old man wanted an audience, someone to watch it. The incident was recorded as a close call, and an indication that some of the other entities may have their own plans for SCP-187. SCP-187's power works without fail, and that tempts many people to try to use her to get answers to important questions. But they should be careful what they wish for, as one doctor found out during an examination. SCP-187 looked at the woman's hand and observed that it was odd that she wasn't wearing her wedding ring. But the doctor was, and had been for the last 19 years. But the next day, her husband filed for divorce and SCP-187's prophecies proved, once again, correct. So what are the future plans for SCP-187? The Foundation is being careful with her abilities, both to preserve her sanity and to prevent any potential time paradoxes. A routine has been established to keep her safe, fed, and protected from some of the worst effects of her ability. But the experiments using her visions aren't going to stop anytime soon. Many of her visions predicted dangerous new evolutions in Keter-class anomalies, giving the team time to prepare and up security measures. No one knows where SCP-187 came from, or what the source of her unique abilities is. But while the SCP Foundation is keeping some of the most dangerous entities in the world safely locked away, their most valuable asset may be one of the most harmless. Because as long as SCP-187 has her visions, the next breakout or apocalyptic event can be stopped in its tracks before it happens. For more on some of the subjects SCP-187 interacted with, check out SCP-106, The Old Man Escape, or SCP-173, The Sculpture Tale.